evening and welcome to this regular meeting of the Northside Board of Trustees. Before calling this meeting to order, the board would like to take just a moment to briefly review some of the rules for conducting our meeting. It's important to note that on March 16th, Governor Greg Abbott granted a request by the Attorney General to temporarily suspend a limited number of open meeting laws to the extent necessary to allow telephonic or video conference meetings in response to the coronavirus COVID-19. I'll now, now ask Ms. McGee to call the roll of trustees. Here. Present. <laughs> no wonder. Mr. Lopez. Present. Ms. Chumbley. Mr. Blunt, yeah. Ms. Reed. In accordance with those suspended rules mentioned above, we certify the following. Notice of this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. We do have a quorum in attendance through in-personal and virtual means. We are meeting in part using a software application which allows two-way communication for trustees. As we would at any other meeting in person and virtual, members of the public who have followed the instructions on the meeting notice for registering to speak during the public comment portion or to address a specific agenda item will be asked to speak for three minutes. All other meeting procedures will adhere to board adopted procedures to the extent practicable. An audio recording of this meeting is being made and will be available to the public at a later date. We apologize in advance for any unforeseeable difficulties and ask for your patience as we navigate unprecedented conditions. The order of business for this meeting is set out in the agenda. One item that you may notice on the agenda is the consent agenda. These, this item includes items that are considered routine or of a recurring nature. All the items listed under the consent agenda will be acted upon in one motion. The meeting will then be officially called to order Please bow your heads as Trustee Reed leads us in invocation and the Pledges of Allegiance. Ms. Reed. Almighty and merciful God, we ask your guidance and blessings upon this board, students, parents, patrons, teachers, and administrators as we are assembled here this evening in the common pursuit of this great nation's wealth, our children. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much. We will start out with the superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. Harl. And I'll say that uh, it is nice to see you uh, all, or it, at least uh, we miss uh, Mr. Lopez and Mr. Medina, but uh, it is nice to be uh, in person at our meeting. Uh, wanted to talk just a little bit about the start of uh, virtual learning. As, uh, as everyone knows, we will start the first two weeks of our school year 100% uh, virtual. We did have some technology challenges yesterday that I think are uh, well documented at this point, but I do want to point out uh, that uh, Lori Jones and her staff did an amazing job of getting us uh, some connectivity yesterday, and then today was a really a very wonderful day. Uh, for kids and teachers to connect all across the district. Lots of hours put into that, and I uh, just want to thank the tech services staff for, for getting us where we need to be uh, today, and we feel very good uh, going forward. 
I want to talk a little bit about uh, where we uh, see weeks three and four uh, in that operational plan. Uh, we're very pleased to see the positive movement in San Antonio and Bear County with regard to public health metrics. And we feel confident that we can start to bring in very small groups of very high need students uh, starting in uh, week three, which is after the uh, Labor Day uh, Monday, uh, and start to educate some kids in the building that just are not served particularly well uh, in a distance learning environment. Similar to that, uh, we feel like we can uh, restart our uh, strength and conditioning camps for our uh, students uh, who are athletes and uh, following very strict protocols in a similar way, uh, some of our students are in uh, uh, fine arts and hope to begin uh, those programs uh, next week. I wanna thank uh, thousands of Northside staff who contributed to a school supply drive that we conducted virtually over the last uh, week or 10 days or so. Uh, typically when we're meeting in large groups um, at the start of the school year, things like convocation and so forth, we collect school supplies as well as clothes for our clothing closet. And that's obviously not happening this year. So we wrote to, our, uh, to, the, to the friends of Northside and to all of our staff about school supplies and have collected thousands of backpacks and supplies to stuff all of those backpacks. And we'll be getting uh, those materials out to our families uh, very soon. I wanna announce to the board or perhaps remind the board that this was the year that Northside students were going to be showcased at uh, the TASA TASBE conference. And obviously that will now be a, an, an all virtual uh, conference, but Northside students will still be showcased uh, at that conference. The actual date and time for that event is Thursday, October the 1st at 12 noon. Uh, is the performance from uh, Northside Kids. And I have no doubt that our fine arts folks are gonna put together something that'll be in their typical fashion, uh, really fantastic. I'll conclude with just a, a preview of a small item under reports. We, we've been spending a lot of time and effort, as you might imagine, on re-engagement, on uh, reconnecting families to, uh, to their schools. And you're gonna see a, a video that, uh, that folks put together, the communications folks and others put together on that re-engagement work and some of the really fine stories that we saw in the closing weeks of the summer to re-engage our, our families with their schools. That, Dr. Hall, concludes Superintendent's report. Thank you very much. Um, are we gonna see the video now or do you wanna wait till after the board uh, members it's report? It's under reports, Dr. It's under reports, okay, great. All right, so are there any board member reports um, that you would like to share at this time? Um, I get you, yeah. Okay, so if you're on Zoom, you get to raise your um, hand on Zoom. Thank you for asking for that. Other than that, you can say, hello, I'm here, or Madam Chairperson, anything. Okay, Ms. Reed? Sure. Karen, and then yeah. Ms. Yeah, Karen was first. Okay, Karen. Okay, this, thank you. This will be fun for a while, y'all. Just hang with us. <laughs> We're sorry. I I was looking for my button to raise my hand on the, you know, crazy. Um, I, I just want to say thank you to all of our staff, our teachers, our um, everybody that made the first day of school um, um, come to life. I know that we had some hiccups yesterday and um, certainly out of our control and sometimes things, sometimes things just happen. But um, I understand today things went things went a whole lot better, and I, I just certainly appreciate um, all of our everybody that had a hand in that. I got to tell you, I spent the last two days in um, Round Rock. I have two kids, two grandkids that are going to first grade, and I spent um, I spent the last two days in virtual um, learning in, for two first grade for two first graders. And what I noticed um, in their interaction with their teacher, which I'm sure that happened here, because I see tweets about it and Facebook posts of the engagement between the teachers and the kids. And I gotta tell you, originally I thought, oh my goodness, first graders, a bunch of, they had about 17 in their class on a Zoom um, synchronous uh, learning um, for, at the, a couple hours during the day. 
And the teacher managed it beautifully. The kids responded beautifully. The kids were excited. They were raising their hands. And um, so I just, I just love that interaction. And I'm sure it happened here. So that was very exciting. And, and again, thank you to everybody. And Dr. Woods, bless you. Um, also, Bobby, um, was it, are you responsible for the, the draft document here for the board development, uh, framework of school board development? So, do you mind if I speak to it a little bit? Okay. So um, to my fellow board members, you may or I know I've talked about this, but um, there's been an ad hoc committee, um, which is a subset of the school initiatives committee that was formed. They've had four meetings since July the 15th. And Kevin Ellis, um, chair of that committee, had given them three goals. The first goal was to update the framework of school board development. The second one was to look at the Texas Administrative Code 61.1B4, um, which um, essentially uh, develops that relationship between the framework and team building because our team building is based off of the, the framework. And then three, um, to uh, create a pathway for registered to authorize providers of team building. So um, TASB has been, uh, there's been a TASB staff person on that ad hoc committee, but certainly a lot of influence from other people um, on the committee. Where we are now is before you, you have the, the draft of the current framework as it, um, as it is written and sits, um, it, the SBOE owns the framework. And then you'll see a revised copy of which this is the ad hocs committee version of the update of the framework. This is all, um, it's now been brought back to the legislative committee in which I'm um, a member of. And we have gone through a few versions and we're actually going to um, propose uh, TASB's um, recommendation to the, the committee and then um, probably to the full board. And the School Initiatives Committee um, meets September 1st of next week. And um, that's when they hear the, uh, it's the first opportunity to give testimony. That'll be the first reading. And Bobby has arranged for the Bear County School Board Coalition to meet with um, our State Board of Rep, Marissa Perez, on Thursday via Zoom meeting. There's two meetings, one at noon and one at 5.30, Bobby. And it'll be, um, I don't know if you have anything else on the agenda, but we'll certainly be talking about this. Marissa does, um, she's a member of the ad hoc committee, at committee as well as school initiatives. And of course it's on the, the board of ed. So it should be a very interesting conversation. And we do need to let her know um, our viewpoint of what the, the framework document, what that actually means to us. And um, we're gonna talk about the implications of the changing of the, the framework. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Freeman, uh, Ms. Reed, and then we'll go to uh, Mr. Lopez. I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit so you can hear me better. A um, number of things have been definitely going on in the school district since, even since we had the last meeting last week. Uh, and it's my understanding that we have uh, a lot of great teachers that are in our classrooms teaching our kids. The story in the newspaper uh, yesterday about uh, Franklin Elementary, I think it was, uh, was again talking about their librarian who carries the lizard around on her shoulder <laughs> and makes it the whole campus a fun learning place for our students. So those are the kind of really great stories that we love to hear. And on top of that, what our staff has done in order to get this year off and running, uh, Brian, you deserve all sorts of accolades. I don't know how you have managed to stay sane through this whole mess. Uh, and there's still more to come, we know, but I think since we now at least have established some way of teaching kids to start with, I think that's a step, very big step in the right direction. Um, I think most of you know I'm a member at the Greater Chamber, and they had a session uh, that uh, I listened in on, which was called the Road to the Session with Jose Menendez and Diego Bernal, who is 
One is the state senator and one is the vice chair of the education committee in the house. And they were talking about all the things that uh, need to be accomplished to get, and everybody's focus is on education. And I think even at this point, the governor has said it has to be the first issue that they talk about in the session. So that's all good thing. I think finally people are realizing the importance of what we do as educators. And parents are certainly learning that teachers are godsends <laughs> because they, they are just, you know, out of their element trying to help these kids at home. And uh, so hopefully after things settle down a little bit, we will have more and more students showing up in the classroom. So just wanted to share at least those two things with you. And once again, to say thank you, Dr. Woods. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Um, Mr. Lopez? Thank you, Dr. Harl. Yeah, uh, mine is just a piggyback uh, off of what Carol and, and uh, Katie have said. You know, Brian, thank you very much. Uh, my congratulation goes up to you and the district staff. Uh, everybody in the district, the teachers, uh, everybody that had to do with us starting this year. Uh, sure, we had some unforeseen circumstances, but you know what? Everybody that I had talked to uh, understood that things were going to happen, but they were accepted of it. Uh, parents were accepted of it, and uh, you know, and they moved forward, and, and they knew it was going to get better. So, you know, my hats off to you and the staff, and. Uh, for really, really uh, making this possible, you know, under the conditions that we have. But, uh, you know, it, it, it was a great kickoff. It was a great kickoff. So uh, thank you very much. My hat's off to you and everybody in the district that, that put this, you know, our first day uh, behind us. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Uh, Mr. Medina. Thank you, Dr. Harl. And I'll just... <laughs> kind of stretch it there as well. Um, again, you know, our custodian, those behind the scenes people that are um, through and through our district, our uh, custodial staff, now that we have people in the building, they are, you know, following f uh, those foot tracks all throughout the building and keeping up to make sure that there's, you know, there's, you know, safeguards in place to protect our staff and, 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 and so forth, procedures that we're doing to make sure that, you know, our schools are safe. And so um, I wanted to, again, you know, also just piggyback on everybody else, you know, all those teachers that are posting, you know, the communication, you know, with social media, all the, their, their pridefulness and, and, you know, showing their school spirit. Uh, I want to, you know, commend those teachers to make sure that that excitement is there. My, I know I have a, a second grader and I have a middle schooler and a high schooler and, and, and you know, they fed off that energy, you know, that their, their teachers and, and staff excitement motivated them to also, even though, you know, they're very motivated to go back, like all students that I know of want to be back in their classrooms with their friends and, and socializing and, and listening to their teachers. Um, you know, the content will teach itself, but listening to those other, you know, guidance uh, interactions that, that happen, and the, the magic that happens in the classroom, those miracles, you know, that, that happens, um, and so I wanted to make sure that, you know, teachers are recognized uh, of that and, and they're appreciated that they're um, sharing that joy that they have, that passion for, for being in the classroom. Again, um, I'll also just go over, you know, you know, when you're going through these difficult times, you're going to have some, um, some bumps, but I think a lot of it were, um, were sanded down, I think, uh, and we're moving forward. And I think there's always um, going to be for parents and children and those that are on the receiving end um, that are at home that it, it is, you know, it was a wonderful experience today. I think it's going to be an even greater experience as we move forward. Um, and I'm very proudful as a parent. I'm very proudful of being a, a part of Northside. And so I wanted to share that with everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Woods, for always, you know, making sure that uh, we're, we're heading in the right direction, even through the storm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Medina. Um, Mr. Blunt or Ms. Chumley? Bobby, go ahead. I'll wait for you. Okay. I shouldn't have waited. I think y'all said it all extremely well, without a doubt, because um, I just indicated by uh, Joseph and that excitement from the first day, no matter what, it was there. Uh, just from the students and others that I talked to that first day, you, you can never match in terms of the excitement and 
this second day has proven to be extremely well. Uh, just one item I want to bring up, and this is something that not even Dr. Woods knows yet, even though he's part of our Go Public Committee because it just happened today, but I, I, I'm proud to be able to announce it. Uh, Clear Channel has come to a, a really good partnership agreement uh, with us. And you're gonna be seeing, I think within the next week or so, a lot of billboards out there thanking teachers and families. Uh, so we're, we're very pleased to get that news actually a couple hours ago. And then also thanks to, uh, I think Monica, uh, we've also got some partnership opportunities that are gonna occur with KRL, KRLN. So it's good to see these new uh, partnerships that are coming up and these new opportunities. So I just want to pass it on everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blunt, that's exciting. Uh, Ms. Chumley. Um, turn this on. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Dr. Harrell. Um, I apologize for stepping out. I want to thank um, Leroy and um, facilities, well, really Leroy, um, for taking a second look at Joey Tomlinson. I think it looks great. Katie, great idea to get rid of the gray on the floor. Um, but I just really wanted to thank you and Joelle's not here, but next gen and um, Jesse Garza for coming back and paying attention to, to what we had to say about it. So thank you for doing that. Dr. Woods, I love your new world, new, your new look. Absolutely love it. I was supporting you being Grizzly Adams for the last few months. But when I saw you, I thought, oh my gosh, Dr. Woods is back. So really like it. Um, just, I wanna say thank you to, I was watching Twitter. And so I work for a large financial corporation. And one of the things that just drives us crazy because we are all deployed to home and that's you know, about 20,000 employees. And periodically technology stops and breaks. And you know, so um, I felt everyone's pain on Monday. But I want to tell you, I was so encouraged and so enthused by the responses that I saw on Twitter. And so I just want to do a couple of shout outs um, to um, Steve Zimmerman, who is new to North Northside. I wouldn't have known that he was new to Northside because he absolutely has bought into the Northside culture and our Northside family. And the very first thing I saw when I had learned about the challenges we were having is his live stream to his students and families and community. And it was exceptional. So just a huge shout out to him. Um, Holmes Theater Arts, they were wonderful all throughout the whole day. They kept texting or kept tweeting encouragement to their students. And they started off saying, well, we're so enthused to be back in school that we broke the internet. I mean, they were just wonderful. So Holmes Theater Arts, um, Irene, um, I believe it's Alvarez at Saul Ross, just constant all day long encouragement to her students, to her faculty. I mean, just amazing. So I, I just wanna say thank you because it's very easy with everything that we are challenged with. And this mask is driving me crazy. Um, that we are challenged with to look at the negative. And I think that that could have easily have happened on Monday. And what I saw is a Northside family coming back together and recognizing that these things are gonna happen. This is new to all of us. And I just was extremely encouraged by the positive attitude that you saw presented. So. Just kudos to, to Northside. And, our, <laughs> and I have a bet, I'm gonna make a bet with Dr. Woods that families after three weeks of doing distance learning are gonna be really hoping that their kids can come back to in-person learning. I have some friends that um, have little ones and um, they were calling saying, you know, is there anyone that can come help? because they were, they were challenged with that, that, uh, that first grade curriculum with trying to keep the kids going. So anyway, I just wanna say thank you. I just really felt th throughout all of this, it's just been so depressing. But Monday, I just truly felt the North Side spirit again. And I just, I just wanna say thank you to everyone that was involved and everyone that we are back 
better together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to um, add just a couple things, how, how incredible convocation was. There were several times I was in the garage getting some things ready for our first day yesterday. And um, we were gonna do some practice sessions before yesterday. And so it was a good thing because there were several places where I really teared up. It was, it was incredibly emotional from the national anthem, um, but the, the kids, the dancing, everything was phenomenal. The, the speeches, um, each and every one of your videos that you did was so warm and touching and so sincere to our, our staff. I did wanna say one group that I wish I would have um, said thank you to is our, our police department. Um, they, I know they're, they're here all the time. Um, and if we would have had an eighth trustee, we would have said a thank you to our police department. So I wanted to use this opportunity to say thank you. Um, it, it couldn't have been better. So, uh, you know, bring Tessa and Tess beyond. I mean, our kids are just going to blow everybody away. Um, and it was so good to see kids. It just was so good to see kids. Um, I do want to congratulate our district on getting one of the top workplaces in the nation. It was in Forbes and 800,000 surveys were sent out, I believe. And I mean, we're up there with all the the businesses, it's interesting, that serve and make products and we serve kids. So I, I think that means so much more because of the business that we're in. So congratulations, Northside, on that. Um, we did our first grade yesterday and I do love, um, Nicholas is in a dual language uh, first grade. And you hear all these little first graders, like they just wanted to see their teacher and to be seen. And they wanted to, you know, just to grab each other in any way they can. And, and there's noise going on, all this stuff. And the teachers keep saying, you know, just say it in Spanish. And you hear this one kid say, Como se dice, turn on mute. And so <laughs> he's like, oh, so frustrated. It's like, yeah. And so they, they learned how to say mute. And I mean, it just was, it just made us laugh so hard and it was so much fun. I don't think um, I've ever seen teachers work so hard in my life and I'm an old teacher. And, you know, just going back to what Melissa was saying and the friends and the colleagues that I've talked to, it was hard work, challenging work but it's so important. And, and it reminded me of, um, uh, I guess it's Teachers Can or Raise Your Hand Texas. They, they have so much good works in, in store for our teachers um, and, and getting the word out on how incredible public school education is. But there's a quote on the back of my mug they gave me that said, those who can stay relentlessly positive, teach. And that summarized what yesterday was all about. So um, celebrations all around. And we are now going to continue on and we are going to go to the re-engagement item number seven, Dr. Woods. Yes, ma'am. As, as briefly previewed earlier, we've been spending a lot of time, as you might imagine, on re-engagement uh, work. And so I thought it would be appropriate to create a little video that highlights some of the great things that we saw over the last several weeks. Two thousand twenty twenty one school year and across the district much work has taken place to ensure we reconnect with our Northside families. Definitely, yes. The work began at the district level to set the stage for the new school year and create an environment where success can flourish. I want to start by thanking all of those who are helping in our re-engagement. From our superintendent's live stream messages to videos featuring district administrators, our goal has been to communicate clearly and proactively 
always sharing with stakeholders the most up-to-date information. As a district, we have invested in digital, broadcast, and social marketing strategies to reach our stakeholders, but the real engagement has been at the campus level. It's here that district staff, teachers and administrators, child nutrition employees and bus drivers, custodial and secretarial staff have come together to re-engage Northside families. Evidence of their work can be found on social media, and some of it has even been featured by our local news media. From virtual town halls to car parades, from teams of campus staff loading school buses and going door to door with door hangers or bags of supplies and technology, our re-engagement efforts have reaped reward. While the start of the 2020 school year may look different and we may not all be back in person, in Northside, we are all back unified in our efforts to connect with students and their families. Back, together, better. Thanks to the communications folks for putting that together, but really thanks to the, the campus uh, folks who uh, obviously that's where the rubber meets the road with regard to, to re-engagement. Saw a lot of great examples there. Uh, and the voiceover was provided by Jessica Palomares, who uh, has been leading the re-engagement work at the central office uh, level and has really done a fantastic job. So thanks for indulging us in two or three minutes of that. Just thought that would be a nice way to uh, start our meeting. And that's the end of that report, Dr. Carl. Thank you very much. Um, oh, sure, Ms. Reed. I know, just you gotta wave at me. I know when we finished off the last school year, we lost some kids along the way. Are we gonna pick some of those up again as we started uh, having the process of really gathering them up to get them Yes, that, and that was really the, the point of the re-engagement work was to kind of focus on those kids that were not well connected in the spring or from whom we had not heard in the summer. So there was a lot of effort focused on those families. I can't give you a number, but, but that, was the, that was the concentration of that work. Great question. All right, so we will now move to item number eight, citizens to be heard. Uh, rules for addressing the board first. Um, we believe that citizens to be heard is important and meaningful and we will listen to what you have to say. We value your opinions, although we are restrained by law from taking any action. Please address your remarks to the board. Confine your remarks to a Northside policy or practice. Limit your remarks to three minutes. At two minutes, Mr. Blunt will hold up a yellow card Thank you, Mr. Blunt. And at three minutes, he will uh, hold up a red car at card asking you to wrap up your remarks. Do not make personal attacks on individuals, please. So Dr. Woods, is it Mr. Pettis will give us the name? Uh, no, it's, I, I have it. It's uh, Wanda Longoria. Thank you. Greetings, Madam President. Is it on? Yes. Greetings, Madam President, trustees, and Dr. Woods. Optimism is defined as hopefulness and confidence about the future or the successful outcome of something. While optimism has its place, COVID-19 does not respect it. What COVID understands is the opportunity to infect, knowing that we must do everything we can to mitigate the spread through planning, guidelines, safe, safety protocols, consistent actions to stop it. The science behind how to stop the spread will end in the end. When we do not follow science carefully and consi consistently, we are the ones to lose. Yesterday, we moved out of the red zone. However, we're just beginning the downward trend in the virus infectious rate. We cannot for one minute put our guard down. Today, I stand you in full PPE because I am a person with three underlying conditions that put me at high risk for contracting COVID-19. Should I get the virus, I could face serious physical complications. I bring with me the letters of members who have no way to safely make their concerns heard. There was no platform given to citizens to be heard beyond face to face today. These citizens are pleading with you to reconsider that and to reconsider their very real challenges. We've had to listen to many tearful stories. Their stories tell the true nature of their worries and issues. They are laid bare. They have cour courageously stepped up to tell their stories in hopes of change. While you have a larger space to conduct your meetings, this will not be offered to our educators. Their classrooms are smaller and will contain many more students. 
And Northside AFT very clearly understands the predicament our nation's lack of leadership has put us in, especially districts which have conti continued to be threatened with lack of funding. We know this is a continued attack on public schools. However, we cannot buy into this optimistic bubble, which the COVID virus has no respect for. We need transformative thinking and planning to ensure our entire school community are kept safe through strong leadership that demands it. In the past, Northside AFT has worked in collaboration with the district to advocate for public schools and to protect educators and students. We are allies, we are not adversaries, yet we were never invited to be part of the task force to suggest solutions. We're calling for strong leadership from you, our elected officials, and our district leadership. Following the status quo is much easier than taking a stand and doing what is best for the common good. We have repeatedly asked for our district to please consider teachers and employees' choice in returning based on their families at risk of contracting this vicious virus. City Church on Bandera Road recently did a series of talks called Rise Up in our communities to call for justice. We've given school supplies to NISD campuses, volunteered, and given funding to our city bank, food bank. We're using our physical space now to provide drive up meals for our NISD community. We're rising up to give hope to a hurting community. Please know that's what Northside AFT is trying to do. We're calling out things that need immediate action. We are not calling out to create soul violence or pain. This is not us versus the district. This is us reporting what we see, expecting it to be handled in a united way, asking to be part of the solution as we continue to fight the real enemy, COVID-19, lack of state funding, lack of leadership at our national and state level, and a push for us to just open up the economy. Thank you. May I ask how to hand these to you? Would you like me to hand them to Barry and have Barry do that? Um, either that or you can leave it on Ms. McGee's table. Thank you. Thank you. Cody Holder. Well, good uh, afternoon, everybody. My name is Cody Holder. Um, it's an honor and privilege, privilege to be here this evening uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I love public forums. I got a degree in political science from Texas A&M, so it's one of my things. Uh, secondly, my wife is a teacher at Northside ISD. She is a basketball coach and a speech teacher at Brennan High School. So it's very, very honor and privilege to be in front of you. Uh, Dr. Woods, I gotta say, I, I did like the beard. Um, I'm actually here tonight um, as a Microsoft representative. It's been about a year since I last spoke to y'all, and I'm here to talk to you about the free trainings that we offer all of our Microsoft family members, which Northside ISD is one of, uh, as you can see by the Surface books you all have. Um, all of our software is compatible with kinesthetic learners, auditory learners, and visual learners, and we can train on that. But more importantly, it's compatible with students who are dyslexic, who may be colorblind, maybe ESS or ESL, and it's already readily available to Northside ISD. Again, y'all are part of the Microsoft family. We really encourage you to take advantage of those free trainings. It's not more, uh, nothing is more important than guaranteeing student success. And we just wanna leverage the tools that you already have at your fingertips to make sure that you're empowering your students, you're empowering your parents and guardians, and not only that, empowering your teachers in the classroom be it in person or virtually, however you decide to do that. I am gonna be here the rest of the board meeting. I'm happy to talk to you however, uh, and help however I can. There is nothing off limits when it comes to Microsoft and we're here to support the Microsoft family, which is Northside ISD. You are a valued part of our family and we really cherish and appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, any more? Uh, no, Dr. Harl, that's, that's the list. Okay, thank you. All right, we will now move to item nine, consent agenda. Is there any question or discussion? Dr. Harl, I just wanted to make a comment on number J, item J. And um, I wanted to thank Patty Hill, um, HR and CTE in relation to looking outside the box to fill those positions because I know that that's, that's hard anytime, but right now it's really hard. And so I appreciate that we have looked outside the box to get those positions filled. And um, that's something that we talked about over the last couple of years. So it's just really great to see that in place. And with that, um, I move approval. 
Okay. For the consent agenda. Second. All right. Um, it's been um, moved by uh, Ms. Chumley and seconded by Ms. Reed. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and try doing a regular vote. Okay, let's just give that a shot instead of a roll call vote. Can we do that on Zoom? I just raise your hand. Yeah, okay, they're shaking their heads. Okay, we're good. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any op opposition, any opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. Thank you very much. All right, we'll do that from now on. Thank you. All right, we will now move to item 12, business and finance, our budget, please. And it'll be Mr. Barajas. If, you, <clears throat> if it's okay, Dr. Hall, I'll make some opening comments and then turn it over to Dr. Barajas for the, for the presentation of the various items. As the board knows, this, is, uh, this end of August meeting is when we typically bring uh, the culmination of the board's and the staff's work on the budget uh, for uh, final consideration. As you know, we bring this to the board starting in February. We start working on it as a staff in December. Uh, and so it is a healthy, uh, lengthy process to, uh, to close out this year's budget and to build the next year's budget. As the members of the board well know, uh, the 2021 budget um, is built very much on purpose uh, as a conservative budget. As we look down the line and we prepare for what could be cuts uh, coming to us uh, from the state, uh, we felt it appropriate to do that. Uh, there is language, as we've discussed in previous meetings, that if uh, late in this calendar year or early in the next calendar year, we feel like uh, we can uh, appropriately reconsider compensation for our staff, that we uh, will be allowed to do that because of the way this budget and the motion language around it has been built. So I wanted to reiterate that to the board. And just uh, quickly before I uh, be quiet is I want to thank uh, Renee and Wes and their staff. Um, what you see tonight is the culmination of, of uh, thousands of hours of work to both wrap up the current year budget and to build uh, the next year. So thanks very much to our business and finance staff. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Renee. Thank you. Mike. First item uh, is the uh, approval of the 2019-20 amended budget. There have been no changes since this was reviewed at the uh, Finance Committee. I'm sorry, Paul, I apologize. I can't get my phone to turn on. We're good, okay. Uh, are we gonna take these all together or uh, individually? Let's take them separately. Okay, well, uh, again, uh, the first one is the 1920 amended budget, which we have covered. Uh, there are no changes since the last time um, uh, the board saw this. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Mr. Lopez, being the chair of the finance committee, has any comments. Yeah, I, I had raised my hand, so. <laughs> Dr. Barajas, did you want to bring it up or do you want us to bring it up in our agenda? If you could bring it up on the agenda. Sure. There's, okay, uh, just checking. And then you asked if Mr. Lopez if he wanted has to make any comments. any comments. Okay, let me just get back to that screen. Okay, Mr. Lopez. Yes, uh, I, I don't think I really need to say much because uh, Brian said it all. So uh, thanks to the finance staff and Renee and Wes and everybody uh, in that for doing this. Uh, so uh, I move that we approve the 2019-2020 amended budget as presented by staff. All right, is there a second? Second. All right, Ms. Reed Freeman seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. So it, item A has been passed. Item B, commitment of fund balance resolution. Uh, yes, Dr. Harl, again, uh, this information was covered at the Finance Committee. Uh, there are no changes uh, to the amounts that the administration is recommending the board commit in fund balances. Okay, and then um, I'm looking up at Mr. Lopez again. And is there specific language, Dr. Barajas, you would like him to use? Uh, not on this particular item, no, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, any comment? 
Mr. Lopez. Uh, again, um, I move that we approve the commitment of the fund balance resolution as presented by staff. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? second. Ms. Reed seconded. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the ayes have it. And so um, item B has been passed, item C. Item C, uh, President Harrell is a uh, resolution uh, to allow the district to defease no less than $36 million during the 2021 year to essentially pay off principal from uh, outstanding bonded debt. And uh, this district has done this uh, over the last several years. Uh, we're asking for approval of the resolution and allowing us to uh, defease no less than $36 million of bond principal in 2021. Thank you. Mr. Lopez, as chair, do you have any comments? Uh, no. Do I move that we approve the resolution as presented by staff? Is there a second? Mr. Blunt, seconded. I'd like, okay, gotcha. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the ayes have it. Item C has been approved. All right, item D. Uh, again, item D goes back to what Dr. Woods uh, started his uh, comments with regarding the 2021 budget. Uh, we're at the point now uh, where there have been no changes from what the board saw at the public uh, hearing last week. So administration recommends uh, the adoption of the 2021 budget with the particular language that has been uh, provided to each board member should a board member want to make that motion. Uh, this particular language gives us the flexibility, as Dr. Woods mentioned, of having uh, an opportunity uh, if the circumstances present themselves to offer a mid-year pay adjustment. The only other comment I would make before the board considers this, and, and I should have said this in my opening remarks, is around the notion of, of conservative budgeting, uh, there are a couple of key goals there. One is to uh, preserve programming for students. Obviously, that's our top goal. Uh, the second is to protect jobs of employees should state cuts be significant uh, and long lasting. So that, that was a, a comment I should have said and, and did not, but that logic undergirds the entire, uh, the build of this budget, if you will. Thank you. Um, this is the Ms. one that needs to be read, right? Right, the orange one. I'd be happy to do yeah. that. Okay, um, let me, Mr. Lopez has oh, hand up. This is okay. okay, Mr. Lopez, did you have any comments as chair of that committee? Uh, no, I, but it's going to just pretty much echo what Brian has said. So um, I, I okay. won't work on that, but uh, so I do have the language. Go ahead. Okay. All right, go ahead. I move that the board of adopt the recommended budget, which includes a revised compensation plan for the 2020, 2021 school year that provides compensation increase for all employees including those who have contracts for the 2020-2021 school year begin earlier than the date the final compensation plan is adopted in an amount to, do, to be determined at a future date. Contingent upon available funds and that this is effective for all work performed for the 2020-2021 school year contract. Thank you for that. Is there a second? Second. All right, Ms. Reed seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the motion has been approved and or the item has been approved and we will move to item E. And the last item for the board's consideration is the approval of the uh, tax rates uh, that will fund not only the general fund, but also the debt service fund. And that language has also been provided to each board member on the green sheet, yes ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Barajas. Um, Mr. Lopez? Yes. Do you have a comment or, okay. Yes. Uh, no, I don't. I'm just gonna go ahead and read the language, if I may. I move that the property tax rate be set at $1.2857 cents per hundred dollars of valuation 
comprised of a rate of 0 0.9502 cents for maintenance and operation and a 0 0.3359 cents for interest and sinking. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. All right, Ms. Freeman, thank you for your second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. All right, the ayes have it. Um, item E has been approved. And let me get to that screen. We will now move to superintendent item 16. Starting Dr. with Dr. Harlan, I, I apologize. I had to no, step no. out. I don't know what's wrong with my phone. I couldn't get it to turn off. Um, I just have a question on the resolution establishing the fund balance commitments. So it says when it is appropriate for fund balance to be assigned, the board may delegate the authority to the superintendent or the superintendent's designee. And so Brian, is that, this, is that similar to the resolution that we've given for the emergency expenditures with COVID? Or is that something that you would bring to us? No, that's a, that, that is a way we've always handled fund balance going back as long as, certainly as long as I've been around. So the board uh, commits certain uh, places to, to do fund balance and then generally smaller assignments of fund balance can be assigned by staff but dedicated to a particular task and then pulled out as expenses are called for with regard to that task. We did something similar when we were kicking off the 2018 bond. The board had an interest in setting aside some fund balance dollars for particular projects so we set up a commitment uh, that we've used and are still using to, to pay for those projects. So is that something though, Brian, that, because um, <clears throat> I know that we've done that and I've just, I just kind of thought I remembered that we did it within, um, <clears throat> when it would, it would be brought to the board then saying that, you know, we're moving this amount of what, are we designating this amount of our fund balance to this? So that practice is the same with this. It is. This isn't changing anything that we've always been, I mean, we've always done, you've always been able to, that authority, <coughs> pardon me, that authority to do that. Right, the board The board specifically commits fund balance by resolution, which was item uh, B, and then uh, staff can assign uh, additional fund balance for particular line items. Okay, I just, I didn't think it was anything different no, than, no. What, than what we've done. Not at all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hurl. Thank you. And now we're back to superintendent item A, COVID related expenditures. Can we pull that up or, or, or no? Okay. I just thought we'd display it, but. Thank you, Leanne, or whoever's doing that. So uh, as we've talked about uh, in prior uh, meetings, and this deals with the resolution where the board is granted authority for purchasing, specifically with regard to COVID-related expenditures. So what, uh, and, and the agreement uh, with the board was that monthly, the board would see an update on those expenditures. And so this is, uh, in, this is that report. Uh, and so these are through August 20th. What you're seeing on this first slide is by category where those dollars have been spent directly related to uh, COVID. So you see personal protective equipment, cleaning supplies, obviously the largest line item is for technology and the board saw a separate report on the technology purchase, but we'll continue to hold it in these, uh, these reports and then, uh, and then a smaller category of other and then um, Leanne, if you'll scroll, or sorry, whoever, whoever is scrolling, whoever I can thank for scrolling. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. So uh, these are specific purchases that uh, that are that are that were purchased in items over fifty thousand dollars, which is the board's policy with regard to items that would come to the board. So we wanted to highlight these. You can see that this is a more granular report. You can see the learning management system. For 770,000, 
the what we believe and we're still this is still being negotiated is because the the texas education agency used some cares act dollars to support learning management we believe that the bulk of those dollars will be reimbursed to us uh, the 670 of the 770,000 will be reimbursed to us but we wanted to show the full cost next you can see the the technology devices um, elementary uh, virtual environment enhancement uh, regional service center cooperative and then finally there you see the PPE so so this is the COVID related expenditures and we'll continue to bring this to the uh, board at our monthly the regular monthly meeting that concludes that report Dr. Hall okay are there any questions or discussion Mr. Blunt yeah just just one comment related to it I think everybody noticed that uh, the cost uh, that technology uh, shows here. Uh, I, I do want to thank Lori. She uh, actually has a really good handle of what we need as a nation, not only for Northside, but across the board. And I, she shared some info. I'd asked her some questions about it that I've been passing on to others, and it definitely is unanimous agreement. So I hope that, uh, you know, when we talk about not only within Texas is advocating more, this is something we really need to look closely at. Uh, there are just quite a few lessons learned on how there's things we can do with the FCC and others that can really make a big difference. So you know, let's keep that on our, our, our mindset because, uh, you know, this is small compared to what's really needed. I just wanted to pass that on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blunt. Uh, Cheryl, I had a question. Uh -huh. Okay, so Brian on the PPE. Yes. So that's something that, um, so it's 914000 and then this will be a continuing expenditure. Yes, ma'am. That is okay. accurate. And unless COVID, unless purchased somehow by the state or some other agency, it'll be a continued expenditure. And so these COVID related types of expenditures are the ones that we're going to look to the state to reimburse us for. Uh, I may need help, Wes or Renee. I, I, are we looking to the state or are we looking to FEMA for that kind of reimbursement? The PPE. Yeah, will you? Because I, you know, I think. You yeah, because Wes, you're not, you're not answering. You know a lot more. About this. <laughs> you're not answering my question, so I think I let me. So I what I was asking is the PPE, since that's a disposable. Yes, ma'am. That will be continuing to have this kind of an outlay on. So how about? How long would is that nine hundred fourteen thousand going to last us in relation to PPE? It's really hard to say because it depends on the pace at which uh, students return to the campus. So that's a it's a very hard question to answer. There are potential but sources of reimbursement from the Corona the Corona Relief Fund uh, that that we haven't been given guidance on yet that we're going to try to get PPE reimbursed from. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then you were saying something about the cleaning supplies, same thing? Cleaning supplies are FEMA. That's- uh, uh, So that 841 is, that's pretty confident that we'll get reimbursed from FEMA for that? Not, no. not in the least. School districts have had a, that, that's, that's supposed to be where we get reimbursement. Uh, school districts have had a very hard time getting, getting reimbursement from FEMA to date. And we, we know of school districts in the Houston area that are still struggling with reimbursement from Hurricane Harvey. Yes, mm -hmm. frankly. And so Brian, then all of this is coming out of our Indian fund balance. Uh, yes. Well, we did budget an amount of money in 2020, 21, the budget that the board just uh, approved uh, for unknown COVID related expenditures, which could be PPE. So um, we didn't assume that we were going to get any of that reimbursed, that we would continue to fund that until such time that money would be available, if at all, through FEMA or through the Coronavirus Relief Fund. But in the meantime, we're going to make sure that we have um, more than adequate supplies of PPE for our staff and students. I just, you know, we're very fortunate that this district has been very conservative over the last, I mean, I know it in my mind, 25 years since I've been on the board for 25 years and have seen that. But our ending fund balance is going to take huge hits on this um, the, with, the, with this continuing, Brian. The, the 
what I've been saying that the you know the the financial burden on school districts, especially school districts that might see an enrollment decline, and if the state chooses not to hold districts harmless for uh, enrollment declines or attendance in a time where we're obviously expending large amounts of funds that we normally would obviously not have ever thought about, right? Our PPE budget has been a, a, a small five digit number in the past, and now it will very soon become a seven digit number. Um, and that looks to continue, and that's not to mention technology and the refresh of that technology and so forth. So it's just one more reason why we presented the budget that we did in the way that we did, because we knew that essentially fund balance until some source of reimbursement is found, and if it ever happens, fund balance is going to cover this. You know, the one thing that I, I am glad to see on, so, and help me, Wes, I think, I think I've got it on that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. One, one small note on PPE is that is the state has given us a, an amount of PPE about $800,000. That's, we didn't spend that money, so it's not including that amount. True. Well, I was just wondering if there's any grants out there, and I'm sure our grant department is, is looking, but I'm very curious if there's any grants out there from some of these corporations and, you know, that are making, you know, that are offering that. You know, I was talking to Joseph and Gerald um, about that the giving out the technology, you know, that we've done, that that was something that um, probably was something that we should have looked at, you know, before on making sure that all of our students had that, that access to technology. I think that those, those, that's really good expenditure. I'm just curious though, on how we will be looking at that. So my assumption, tell me if I'm wrong, is that you know, even when our kids come back from distance learning, that they're going to hang on to this technology and still be able to use it in their home. And so then, and Brene will be a part of this, I'm sure, is then looking forward how we look at our budget on being able to keep up with all of that technology that we have given out and updating it and you know, that, that piece of it. So Lori, I'm sure that's a huge challenge that you have. And I want to tell you, because I apologize in my um, remarks that I did not say thank you to you and all of your staff. I'm sure it was a frantic Monday. And so thank you for everything that all of y'all did for all of us. Um, but anyway, just so not now, but at some point, Brian, I would like to have an idea of, you know, particularly with the situation that we're in right now, but how are we going to look at planning that out of keeping all of our kids with technology and updated? Yeah, yeah. actually, um, we could, I mean, we don't have the materials with us, but we could actually answer the question. Lori and Renee and Wes and I have sat and had that very conversation. Um, we, so just a quick preview of what, what, of what will be a much longer answer is, obviously we, were, we are adding significantly to the, to the inventory of student devices, significantly to that inventory. We um, have uh, we have always tracked, or I guess not always, what seems like a very long time now, back to before bond 2014, when we started buying significant amount of student use devices. We set aside some fund balance dollars to refresh out, and again, general fund fund balance, to refresh those uh, devices so that we would not be using bond funds for that purchase. We refreshed that commitment and fund balance again in 2018 and we just refreshed it again because we knew we were buying so many more here for the 2020-21 school year. So we have accounted for the additional devices and the refresh that will be required from a financial perspective. Now from an accounting perspective that's a whole different deal um, and we can circle back to how how that's managed but um, there is an answer to that question and we feel pretty good about the answer both from a financial perspective and from a tracking inventory uh, type perspective. That's great. Ms. Freeman. Yes, thank you, Dr. Harrell. And um, this is unrelated to the specific agenda item, but I, I would like us to keep that in mind too. When we, when we look at bond expenditures um, post COVID here, when we start looking at our upgrades to technology, Lori, and, and we don't need to go into this now, but uh, we're on a, a certain cycle of updates in our schools and our teachers get 
you know, whatever, whatever it is that they get. I, I have just begun to um, learn how much Chromebooks or how useful Chromebooks can be and their, um, the cost is compared to what we currently have in our classroom. And I know y'all will be, be doing that, but perhaps, um, perhaps there's some savings that um, as we progress and technology progresses as we go further on. Yeah, the, the big purchase that we've just made that isn't yet delivered is, is what, 90% Chromebooks. Yes, Lori? Maybe more than 90%. It's, it's the vast majority is that because you can get a fair amount of device at a fairly low cost um, and it's functional with regard to the LMS and so forth. So, so we can circle back to the technology uh, purchases for sure. Yeah, maybe at a technology meeting mm -hmm. or something that's more in-depth conversation. Thank you. Thank yeah, the, the other, com the other. I'm sorry, I, I don't want to belabor it, but just we are getting ready to uh, double the, the size of the pipe, if you will, with regard to internet. That'll roll out in the middle of September. That was actually planned pre-COVID. That's not a COVID-related uh, thing, but it's, it's appropriately timed given, you know, the amount of bandwidth it takes to do uh, high-quality distance learning. So that will roll out here in the next uh, two or three weeks. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Yeah, uh, just wanted to sort of refresh memories. Uh, some of them are not memories for you, but they are for me because they go a long way back. Uh, when I first came on the board, we had no ending fund balance. There was none at all. And the ending fund balance is there kind of like an emergency fund so that if there are emergencies like COVID that come up, that's where you can utilize that money and that fund will eventually build back up again because it has been building over the years dramatically. And uh, just to keep that in mind, unfortunately, we have a state government who has a huge ending fund balance and they're not willing to spend it. And I don't know what they think they're doing with it. I mean, there is a purpose for those things. So just to keep that in mind, we are doing with our ending fund balance what needs to be done to handle this emergency. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reed. I'm looking to see if there's any more comments. Um, I think, too, I was just going to add um, continued our advocacy and, and outreach um, in this respect. Maybe it starts on Thursday, Bobby, at that meeting, but certainly um, we need to keep pounding on the doors. We, we wrote a great letter. We've been talking to our legislators. We've been going to meetings. We've been shouting from the mountaintop, but I think um, we have to keep doing that. Um, and, and with specific examples now. So Melissa, thanks for starting that conversation with specific, specific so we can add that now instead of general statements. So Dr. Woods, I know you and, and Naomi can help us with that as well. And I think once we go from generalities to specifics, we can really, really help them do the same thing in, in Austin and hopefully, yeah. Um, in DC. So thank you everybody for that. All right. So we now will move to uh, endorsement for TASB Board of Directors. This is position A for Region 20. It's an open position that is currently held by Rolinda Schmidt, who is seeking re-election. There are three other candidates, Lisa Brown from Fort Sam Houston ISD, Luis Fernandez from Uvalde CIS Consolidated Independent School District, and JD Rodriguez from Dilly ISD. Their bios have been provided to us um, in Friday letter a couple times. And so we are asked to endorse a candidate by submitting a TASB endorsement form um, and it's due pretty quick. So uh, any discussion on this? Dr. Harrell, I'd like to- Oh, go ahead. I'd like to ask Karen, for, for Karen's input on yeah, that. Yeah, she sees the our representative TASB. I, could, I mean, I'm sure that you have a better feel for this, Karen, than, than I do. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I, um, we've been provided, there are two people that are actively seeking endorsements from boards and two of the four that have actually received endorsements from um, boards in Region 20. It's a policy on the, on the TASB board, um, if you receive over 50%, if, if over 50% of the school districts in your region endorse you, then you have an automatic seat on the TASB board. If 
not one of the candidates receives 50%, there's another um, opportunity at 25%. If a candidate receives 25% of the um, endorsement or 25% of the districts endorse a particular candidate, that candidate then has an opportunity to speak at the delegate assembly with um, whoever has been selected by the nominating committee of the TASB board to go forward. So the nominating committee has not met yet um, concerning these candidates. I will say that JD has um, received 20, 25% endorsement. And so he will um, automatically be given that opportunity to speak at the delegate assembly with, a, if, whether it be him or somebody else um, that the nominating committee chooses. I will say that I've served with um, Rolinda Schmidt on the TASB board. She, um, you have her bio in front of you. She's, she served on her own local board for 24 years. And she's taken the opportunities, um, she's taken opportunities to be involved um, as an advocate for public education over the years. You can see that she's um, outside of being on the TASB board, she served as a, a delegate or an alternate delegate to the assembly for, for 20 years. Um, and we all know what that entails because all, all of us have the opportunity to be able to, to do that. She's also, um, She's also testified before the um, House Pub Ed Committee. She has been an invited um, panelist before the Texas uh, House of um, the, the House of Education Finance. She was an invited panelist to testify before that subcommittee. She's testified before ESPEC, um, as well as um, she's, you could see that she's had other opportunities to go to DC to network with trustees across the state as well as um, to advocate before our um, congressmen and, and senators. Again, very involved. Her leadership currently on the TASB board, I will say, is vital. She serves, um, especially right now, she serves as chair of the legislative committee. And um, we've got some important um, work going on right now with, um, with what we're going, uh, uh, what we're looking at regarding the, the State Board of Ed, um, the committees that has taken up the uh, updating the, the framework document and what that means to school board training, our school board training, and the impact that um, what's going to, what could be the outcome of this, the impact that it could have on school board governance. So um, I, I think she's an, she's an excellent candidate. We, we do need her leadership. The, the TASB board um, benefits from the same stability as we have uh, on our local boards for those, um, those people to remain um, seated. And she also, I, I believe, is a great candidate for an officer, to be an officer on the TASB board. And we do need um, good leadership in that particular role. So um, I think that's happening. Again, I think I've said my, I mean, you could look at JD's. Um, JD is passionate about public ed. He has um, three years experience on his local board and you can read um, his involvement um, outside or the opportunities that he's taken to um, advocate. But it would be um, my recommendation at this time to support Rolinda Schmidt. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Lopez. Yeah, I, I wanted to, you know, talk on behalf of J.D. Rodriguez, because I, I do know him. I have met him before, and we have uh, worked together on a couple of, uh, you know, at, at the MASPA school board. Yes, you know, Carol, you did a very good point in highlighting his career and or his experience. Um, while I know he may not have a lot of experience, uh, that Rolanda does, uh, but I do believe that in in that area for where he represents a Dilly ISD, uh, you know, bringing in uh, some new energy uh, to that uh, committee, uh, I think would help and benefit um, 
you know, his commitment to Dilly uh, has been very strong and it's evident uh, because he, he grew up there, he went to college in A&M and came back and served as a trustee. And, and also he is uh, a graduate of TASB. So, you know, it, 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 tell, it talks about a lot of his commitment to public education and his willingness to go further and understand uh, the, the school board's role in the state of Texas. Um, you know, just a tremendous advocate on, on behalf of public education and for small districts as well. Um, I wanted to nominate him for our recommendation for, for as, as a re, uh, Region 20 representative for TASB. So I don't know how we would do that, uh, but that was gonna be my recommendation. I would like to nominate him. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Reed? Um, I did not make a motion. I'm not sure what we're doing here yet. Okay. I was just, we're just speaking about okay. uh, we're just what talking she's about done. Candidate. I just wanted to make sure that where we were in the process. Right. Um, as you know, I'm a past president of TASB, served on the TASB board before Karen did. Uh, past presidents are invited to come back to meetings. And, and so I have still been a participant at TASB. And we have been certainly well represented with Rolinda. She's done a fantastic job. And I would agree with Karen that the continuity on the board is really to be appreciated because other, if you just have people coming and going, they don't really know why we're doing the things we do and why TASB does the things that they do. So uh, when I look at the bio that Rolinda submitted, uh, she has been an officer on the Kerrville board for many, many years and certainly has the qualifications to be a leader within the TASB board. And I'm certainly supportive to have her continue in that role. So if we need to make a nomination, I'll nominate her if that's what you want. Okay, let's, let's see if anyone else wants to speak on either one of the candidates. Uh, Mr. Blunt? Yeah, I, I guess, uh... I just have a question from a process standpoint. So JD has, um, what percentage right now? 25. He's 25. Got 20, he, he does have right at 25%. I haven't looked today, but it is at 25%. He's at 25. Um, it's very tough to make 50% in uh, region 20. I've never seen it uh, before. <laughs> But it's, he's there. There's sure. not there's not an opportunity to have that because oh, we only have um, the end of, I think the deadline is the end of this month and we only have three yeah. more days left and there's not enough board meetings in region 20 to, to get to that point. Yeah, but what, what does Rolinda have currently? Rolinda, I believe has, um, I don't know what percent she has. I think she has seven um, mm. endorsements. Okay, and what I was thinking and about- 20, 20, I'm sorry, 25%. I think we have 49 districts in region 20, Dr. Woods, is that about right? So uh, JD has 25% of the right. 49. You know what I was thinking about, I actually served, I'm not gonna give an opinion, I actually served with Rolinda when I was on too for a little bit, can. but I won't give an opinion either way. My suggestion is this, because TASB process is very interesting on how this whole thing is up working out. JD is basically in already. Rolinda's well, not. Yeah. We think we got a solid decision uh, to be made. Be honest, we're not impacting anything. It's all going to be decided through their particular process. But if we want to at least have the opportunity for everybody to consider both, I would, I would favor Rolinda in that light. And that's not giving an opinion on either one. It's just saying from a process standpoint, not how TASB works. It gives everybody an equal chance and it lets the body appropriately decide which one is the best candidate in the end. Okay, so, with JD, so, he's already there. So explain that then. He's so, on the ballot. JD's already on the ballot. He's got he's on the ballot already. He's I'm on the ballot. So, does. so JD, um, I'm interested in his background. I like his background. Um, so JD is already no. going to be able to speak yeah. um, at the okay. delegate assembly for this position. Yep. Okay, is Rolinda at that position yet? Yeah, That's no, close. Not. Okay, so Rolinda doesn't have it. So what you're sure. saying, Bobby, is, um, and well, Gerald, to your point, so 
JD already now will be able to be a candidate. Yeah. And what you're saying then, Bobby, is that without our support, Rolinda won't be able to be a candidate? Yeah, what I'm saying is we, we can't do any more for JD, although we can speak for her unless we're really strong, but he's already set. Melinda is not. So if we have any questions on our board, let the whole body decide. And the only way we can do we can help that is by voting for Rolinda. So right. but and the short the short answer too is um, by giving Rolinda support, it won't knock or no. dement JD's mm -hmm. um, but will our will our right. support then secure Rolinda to be able to be no, no. May, may as, I, as a candidate too? No. No. May I, may I say something? Please. Um so remember the the nomination whoever the um is selected at the TASB nominating from the TASB nominating committee will go forward with JD if that person's JD then JD is the only person that goes forward if somebody else one of the other four is selected by the nominating committee to go forward then then JD and that person do have the opportunity. And at this time, since we don't have an in-person delegate assembly, they um, whoever the candidates are, they will be able to record a, I think it's a three minute um, speech on their on their qualifications and and passion to, yeah. um, to be on the TASB board. Because I would like to help Rolinda to be able to be one of those candidates and then let the TASB delegates yeah. make make the decision, but so uh, what I will say. So is there anything, Karen, us doing that not going to help or is going to help? <laughs> I, what I, I will I'm say so is that candidates will go forward in the nom the nominating committee does look at the number of endorsements that each candidate has in, in the region. I'm sorry, Don. You know, I'm with you. I'm yeah. just saying. So yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm no. Um, so the the number of endorsements is a consideration of the nominating committee. It's not the only one, but it is something that the nominating committee considers. And when she goes, when they both, or who, sorry, whoever goes before the delegate assembly, they, they will say, you know, I've received X number of endorsements from my own region. And then it's up to the delegate assembly to decide how much of an important factor that is in um, determining. Who would be the? I have a who would be on the task board. Uh, Mr. Lopez, did you have any questions or discussion comments? Yeah, I had a question. So, do we know how many more districts are going to be out there voting? Do we know that for sure, Karen? Right. That's what I was saying. Sorry, do you know how many how many more districts are still needing to vote or endorse? Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't understand. I, I, is the question, how many more districts have the opportunity to endorse? Yeah. I, in all honesty, I really don't know. It depends on how many board meetings there are between now and the end of the week. I don't think there are very many. And that, that was my, my point. I'm, Gerald, I'm with you on that. That was my point. If there's three or four more than me this week, then she could be 25%. If not, then it really doesn't matter what we do, except for a Karen's sake. Yeah. So to me, it's kind of like, either we decide to move one candidate forward or, or we could just possibly say, look, we choose not to endorse, right? Would that be another option? Not choosing not to endorse? Karen? I'm, still, I, I'm having a hard time. I, could, I didn't understand it either. Yeah, he was asking, could we not endorse? Not send we, anybody we forward? We can choose not to endorse. I don't, I think that might be come to a vote of the, of the board right here as to whether we endorse or not. Um, I just, I, I will say that, and I'll, I'll say this again, the, the TASB participation on the TASB board is not just filling a seat. It's an active role. And in my opinion, it's not an opportunity to, um, to build, it's, it's always an opportunity to build leadership, but you um, certainly experience on the TASB board is, is just, I, I believe it's vital. Um, in this. So well, I, I know um, I'm not sure what protocol is. I think we could sit here and determine whether we're going to endorse or not by a, by a motion and then um, go forward with a vote. Yeah, that would I, be my recommendation. Yeah, I think um, let's proceed with the motion. And the first, um, I've only heard one motion, but I didn't put it up that way either. I heard uh, Mr. Lopez make a motion. Right. Um, 
that I would endorse uh, that we that we in, sure or, is we recommend uh, JD Rodriguez nomination for the endorsement for the TASB board, and then we have a nomination from Gerald, and then if Karen wants, do we have a nomination for Rolinda, and then let's just vote. Right. Yeah. And I'm then okay. whoever gathers the most votes will be our the person that we endorse for the TASB board. I'm looking is that the wishes of the board. Bobby, what? do you agree? Katie? Okay. Okay, let me check. Um, Mr. Lopez, you still have your hand up. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That was to ask the question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't understand. I'm sorry, Mr. Lopez. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had my hand up because I was wanting to speak. So it's okay. down. So do we want to vote on my first motion? So right now I think is I believe you have a motion on okay, so I move that we open nominations for endorsement for the TASB board. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. Mr. Blunt, you did a you made a second? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will take motions. Well then okay. I, right. right. So then all those in favor of endorsing Dr. Okay. Harl. Okay. Doing the doing the because you've got a motion in the second. Gotcha. Okay. All those in favor of taking nominations for the board say aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay. So the ayes have it. So we now will take a motion. Right. So nominations are open. Right. And uh, Madam Chair. Ms. Freeman, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm looking up there too. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Okay. Um, I motion that we endorse um, Rolinda Schmidt. Okay. Is there a second? Do we no, need a second so, on that? No? no, let's just clarify. So we've okay. got nominations open. So um, Karen is nominating Rolinda Schmidt. Okay. So and we're good. So, so we now don't need a uh, Mr. Lopez. And then good. Mr. Lopez is. Uh, I nominate J.D. Rodriguez from Dilly ISD. Okay, and because it's the first time I'm doing this, do we just go ahead and take a vote and, by and then, the person's name? Right. We need to I'll, move, I'll move to close the nomination. Second. Okay, say it one more time, Mr. Blunt. No, I'll move to close the nomination. Okay, Mr. Blunt, move to close nominations. And Ms. Reed, second it. And then take a vote to close it. Okay. And so I just say the name out loud. Well, no, take take the vote to close nominations. So all those in favor okay. of closing All those in favor. Oh, I, I'm trying to write down the script to this. This is great. So, okay. <laughs> so all those in favor that the nominations are closed, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Okay, so the ayes have it. The nominations are closed. And now we'll we vote. vote. Okay, let me put that down. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, all those, do we just do all those in favor for each one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? All right. All those in favor of a role, Linda Schmidt, uh, say aye. Okay. And let's right. just go ahead and do hands then. Yeah. So I see Mr. Blunt, I hope Ms. McGee, uh, Ms. Reed, all right, Ms. Freeman, Ms. Chumbly, and I'm looking. Um, uh, Okay, I don't see any hands. Um, I'm gonna raise my hand, although I do wanna say JD is an incredible man filled with integrity, the best DPS officer between here and Katula. We know he, him he personally, time. great guy. He has he's time. in. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's in, so I think it's a win-win. Okay, um, so um, with that vote, we don't need to vote, but we will on JD. Right, you still need to take a vote. So all those JD. in favor of JD Rodriguez, Aye. Okay. Raise your hand, please. I'm looking. Oh, you're doing it on the screen? Okay, I'm looking on Zoom. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Medina, thank you, Mr. Medina and Mr. Lopez, uh, two votes for JD. Yes. All right, thank you very much. I like that. So lesson. we will fill thank out you. the endorsement form. And then the form, yes, thank you very much. 
Since okay. JD already okay. has made it, because I, I agree with you, Karen. Yeah. I think he's, you know, he's incredible. Um, has some good things about him. But this way, then hopefully we'll let the delegate assembly make the decision, but it does help for Linda get to that point. Yeah. Great, thank you. And thanks for the, the tutoring. I appreciate that, everybody. <laughs> All right, so now we will move to, let's go down, let's see. Uh, C, board member attendance at Council of Urban Boards of Education Annual Conference, NSBA. Uh, and School Board Association Annual Conference. Dr. Woods. Just this is an annual item, Dr. Harl, that, uh, that does require the board's approval if members of this board wish to take advantage of any of those opportunities. Uh, again, an annual uh, item. I move approval. Is there, uh, Ms. Tumley moved for approval. Is there a second? Second. Let me double check if I want to make, see if there's any hands up. Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. All right. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Um, I just have a question. Do we know if any of these are, have already said that they're going to be virtual or are they still, it's, they haven't made a decision yet? I'm Read not it. aware of an announcement on any of these yet. It says in here that the one, one is going to be in Washington, D.C., so. Yeah, I, I don't think they've announced whether virtual or in-person yet. Gerald, have you heard anything? No, ma'am, I haven't. Just other than just, just being virtual. Can you all hear me? Yes, right. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I just didn't know if you'd heard anything with the um, um, MASBA or not, if you'd heard anything about that. Well, it's scheduled for February 18th through the 21st here in San Antonio, so. Right. Okay, nomination now for the NSBA Advocacy Institute stipend. So this item, uh, again, is, is an annual. There is a stipend uh, that TASB awards to a trustee in each of the 36 congressional districts uh, in our state. Uh, it does require that the trustee who is applying for the stipend be named and I believe the deadline's coming up fairly quickly, September 6th. May I ask? Sure. Sure. Uh, Ms. Freeman? Yes, so um, it has not yet been determined whether this um, will be held virtually or in person. And um, I do not have any idea or there's, there's no timeline as to when they will actually name that. Actually, um, uh, Ruben, um, as you might know from, from TASB, coordinates this, and he has said that what we can do here as a board, if you're, if you're interested in going, um, it, and each board chooses one person and then an alternate, or has the opportunity to. We don't have to send anybody, but we do have that opportunity. Um, you can declare whether you would go just um, as, a, uh, as a candidate if it was just virtual. So we do have that, that opportunity. My thought here is if there's somebody here on this board that would consider going in person and virtual, then I think that person is a, is a likely candidate that we should consider. If not, then, um, then we go from there and decide uh, if there's somebody that's interested in just attending a virtual um, conference. And then we indicate that in our, um, when we submit this to, to TASB. Okay, so do we need to act on that right now? So we, we do uh, need approval for this stipend, but do we have someone who's interested yet? Joseph, are you interested? I know last year you had wanted to go, and I apologize, I was signed to go and then life got in the way and I wasn't able to go. Um, but I know that you were interested in it, Joseph. Are you? I'm dearly interested but due to circumstances uh, that were unforeseen and, and um, possibly some future uh, appointments that I have. Um, I believe I'm, I won't have uh, the flexibility to attend this coming year. Okay. 
I wasn't sure with, with your arm. I didn't know if, if that would, but I wanted to give you the opportunity <laughs> if you were, because I know last year okay. you had wanted to go. Well, so we stipend. can go ahead and vote on the stipend. And then if anyone hasn't gone, it, it's tremendous. And I would imagine that virtual is, Melissa, did you want to go? I would, I would like I would like to, but I would want to wait and see if anyone else. Um, so did I hear, is, is Joseph? Uh, I, cannot, he is. Unable, okay. Unable. I, uh, I, I was thinking that what Joseph wanted to go to was the convention, which is different than the advocacy institute. This, this is, is just the advocacy institute. Right. And, and I, I don't think that's what he was looking at going well, to. Well, last, last year, year, Katie, I signed up thinking that Joseph was going to sign up and then I'd be that I would yeah. be the the alternate. Mm -hmm. And then he wasn't able to. So yeah. that's why I ended up being yeah. bumped up. So is there anybody interested here in going in person? But this year, I would I would be right after someone else right after but, somebody well is as, inaugurated. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would like to go. Okay. Um, in person. So then we need to apply for a second. All right. So let's go ahead and have a motion for um, the nomination, at least for the stipend. Yeah. I, so is there a motion? So moved. Okay. Uh, Ms. Reed and a second from Mr. Blunt. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> all those opposed, nay. All right. So um, that's been approved. And future agenda items, but, Dr. But Wood. I'm sorry. Oh, sure. Dr. Harrell, I apologize. So we need to have a person that's going forward plus the alternate. Okay. So, so uh, we have plus one. an alternate. Okay. So and so, in case something happens and, and you couldn't go, then somebody else um, would have that opportunity. So we do have. Okay. So is there an alternate? Karen, how about you? Um, I, I would go as an as an alternate, if it was virtual, I'm, I'm not gonna make a commitment to go in person, whether it was offered or not. Okay. So, I, I mean, we could say that going forward, but if there's anybody else here, that's, I mean, I've been out before. Well, I would go. I, I just don't wanna take, so I've already been, and I don't wanna take someone Well, else. same here. The same, me too. That's the same thing, Gerald. Gerald, would you be interested Gerald, in I'm doing looking. that? As an alternate, sure. Okay, great. In person. In person. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, you said yes. You said yes, right? Yes, you're kind of, you're kind of like in the dark. Yes, ma'am, I did. I okay, guess. okay, I saw it. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, future agenda items. Uh, perhaps. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, uh, okay, all right, we'll take it. Um, it was Ms. Reed's, Ms. Reed, do you want to amend the motion to include um, Melissa Chumbly and uh, Gerald Lopez? Gerald Lopez as the alternate? And Bobby? Second. Second. So all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, thank you. All right now, future agenda items. Sorry, Dr. Hall, I'm toggling with all my screen here. Uh, so uh, on, with regard to future agenda items, we're still uh, tentatively holding a called meeting on September 8th. Right now, we're not tracking any uh, agenda items, and I feel confident by the end of the week, we'll be able to say to the board a yay or a nay uh, on, on the September 8th. Obviously, September 22nd is our, uh, our regular meeting for, uh, for the month of September. We're, we're holding some dates for potential called meetings uh, in October, but really uh, don't have items for those yet uh, either. So again, I try to commit to the September 8th date by the end of this week. Thank you very much. Are there any comments from the board on future agenda items? All right, we will now move into executive session. The Board of Trustees on August 25th, 2020, beginning at 6.43 p.m. will convene in closed meeting in accordance with Texas Government Code Section 551 adult 71 551.072 and dot and 551.074 um, 
And we're coming we're gonna back to do it in here? No, we're going to we'll, we'll, we'll move back across the hall okay. to an adjacent room. All right, we're going to move to an adjacent room, and we will take yeah. our Zoom we'll with us. to the kitchen where we used to have them. Oh, okay. The back oh. room for the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. We're going to reconnect with those. Okay. Uh, the Board of Trustees on August 25th, 2020, beginning at 7.13 p.m., will convene an open meeting. Let me put 7.13 down. Uh, action to will take place on the following items. Uh, item A, consideration and possible action to approve a resolution determining that the superintendent of the district is authorized and empowered in the name of and on behalf of the district is there a question? I'm sorry. To negotiate, execute, deliver, and perform in the name of and on behalf of the board and the district, all instruments or documents as a superintendent in his discretion may deem necessary or des desirable in connection with such acquisition of the property, including without limitation a contract for the purchase and sale of the property. Is that, that, oh, that item is the one we, I don't we pull? Sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, then help me with, we have three that we have to approve. I only have B and C left. So there are, uh, one of them has. One is a declaration. And one has two parts to it. Right. So B is the one with the city. And I think <laughs> Mr. Blood has that one. No. Uh, Bobby has B. Yeah. I, I think Mr. Blood has B. Okay, consider it. Okay, uh, all right. I'll just go ahead and read it. Um, the item B, Mr. Blunt. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'll make a. I hereby move that the following resolution be adopted by this board. The resolution, authorization of interlocal agreement with City of San Antonio, resolved that the superintendent or his designee is hereby authorized to execute that certain interlocal agreement presented to the board and discuss an executive session with such revisions deemed necessary and desirable by the superintendent, providing for the exchange of a portion of unused land at Timberwell, Timberwell Elementary School owned by the division for the Meadow Cliff Community Center property owned by the city of San Antonio and that the president of the board is hereby authorized to execute the deed uh, contemplated thereby. The following resolution was adopted by the Board of Trustees of the Northside Independent School District on the 25th day of August, 2020. Do you need a second? I'll second the motion. Okay, Ms. Reed, hang on, let me just see if there's any discussion um, on, okay. Um, all right, it's been moved. The resolution's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All aye. Those opposed, nay. All right, the ayes have it. The resolution's been approved. Um, resolution um, C, item C. Then you have to go back. Ms. Chambly, I believe. Go back uh, let, me, let, let me say, uh, okay. there's two resolutions for this one. I think okay, Jim has to read the, the first one. resolution. Is that correct, Jim? Yes, I'll, I'll read the first He's resolution. Gonna He's going to read it. Okay, Jim. So uh, the first resolution is a declaration of public necessity resolved that in accordance with the information provided at this meeting, this board hereby declares a public necessity for the acquisition through negotiation and purchase and or eminent domain proceedings through settlement or final judgment in accordance with Texas Education Code sections 11.151 and 11.155, chapter 21 of the Texas Property Code and other relevant statutory provisions of the following described real property to ease significant traffic congestion, to assist with vehicular and student safety and for other purposes in support of the district's John Marshall High School. Namely, that certain 1.1053 acre tract of land out of lot 18, 
Block A, Montes Robles Park in the city of Leon Valley, Bear County, Texas, located at the south corner of Eckert Road and Robin Road, currently owned by LHW Development Company. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve this resolution? Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay, I heard uh, uh, Ms. Chumley and then uh, uh, Reed second. I'm going to make, say, approve the declaration of public necessity as presented. Second. Okay, so Ms. Reed made the motion and Ms. Chumley seconded. And even though it's on their item C, there are two resolutions. So this is the That's public the necessity one uh, that we're voting on. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, nay. All right. The ayes have it for the resolution declaring public necessity. All right. And then the interlocal. The second, the second, second resolution for this particular property, Ms. Chumley has. Is the resolution authorizing the super? Okay. I hereby move the following resolution. Your microphone. Oh, there it is. Okay. I hereby move that the following resolution be adopted by this board. Resolution authorization of search and actions. Resolve that the superintendent is hereby authorized to take those actions, including the execution of any and all documents and the hiring of legal counsel which he deems necessary or desirable in his sole discretion to acquire for the district exclusive rights to the following real property from LHW Development Company through negotiation and purchase and our imminent domain proceedings through settlement, our final judgment, pursuant to Texas Education Code sections 11.151 and 11.155, chapter 21 of the Texas Property Code and other relevant statutory provisions, namely that certain 1.1053 acre tract of land out of lot 18, block A, Montes Robles Park in the city of Leon Valley, Bear County, Texas, located at the south corner of Eckert Road and Robin Road. The foregoing resolution was adopted by the Board of Trustees of the Northside Independent District on the um, 25th day of August, 2020. Okay, it's been... Uh... The resolution has been moved and seconded by Mr. Um, Blunt. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed? All right, the ayes have it. Um, and is there a motion for uh, regarding the appointment of the vice principal at Warren High School? I would move approval of the uh, recommendation as presented. Second. Okay, is there a second? Ms. Freeman? Second. All right, it's been approved and seconded. Um, and that is it. Oh, well, I, I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the ayes have it. The board meeting ended at 721. That's unreal. <laughs>